Let me to say a couple of things uh, about our conference round table, in fact, uh, and to represent uh, our friends and colleagues, uh, Professor Kiel and HR, and then to, to explain what is our intention uh, uh, regarding this uh, visiting lecturing program. In fact, is a round table conference uh, with an uh, unusual topic um, on the Christian question, like, uh, you know, on the Jewish question. Uh, and then we will explain later. So first uh, to commence the situation with the keynote speakers, uh, uh, we have on the list, as, as we already distributed, um, uh, in, fa in fact, two parts uh, of, of the program, of the lecturing program, Gilani Jar on the Christian question. As we know, we already distributed to the all participants, including uh, the people who are not of the, <coughs> on the list to speak from the first glance, the uh, uh, whole article, which is in, in some kind of the summarizing uh, all of his uh, books, which is trilogy on Christianity, in fact, which we can find here. One book was already translated by, by Belgrade Circle a couple of years ago, Enemy. Jew and Arab. The other book is Nada is here, translator. It's just already uh, arrived uh, in Serbian version of the summit. And the third book is, uh, we are waiting in Columbia University Press 2030 to appear, that come. And we, in, in advance, Skype uh, by copyrights. It's uh, the title is on the blood, the critique of Christianity. So we have, uh, let's say, in the Serbian language, uh, maybe, I don't know, in Greece and Turkish, your books too. Uh, so all of three books, uh, so we are ready uh, to, to, in academic level, we are ready to uh, speak uh, on his idea, on uh, his incredible project of crit critique of Christianity, e even in our language, local Serbian language. So whole idea is let's allow the, uh, Professor Anijar to speak half, half hour, not reading, please, but comment, commenting his introduction in the article, already distributed to all of you. And then uh, we have a list of the co-speakers who was planning to speak 10 minutes, each of them, and then there will be uh, you know, comments or debates or, uh, so we have a, Professor um, Milan Lukomanovic, it's kind to come here, it's, he's with us from Philosophical uh, Faculty at the Belgrade University. Uh, Professor Zorica Kuburic, welcome to the meeting. She's a Philosophical Faculty in Novi Sad. Professor Novica Milic, who was on the list, she, he didn't arrive even, uh, he didn't uh, answer on my email or on my cell phone, uh, uh, seeing uh, what has happened, uh, why he's not appeared, because he is on the list almost uh, one month, so he have a time to say, I couldn't come, sorry, and so on. Yeri uh, Vukashi Milic is Christian Cultural Center. He would come, he told me, uh, morning, uh, so we are waiting for him. Zoran Grozdanovic uh, is a theologian theolog from the Zagreb. Uh, he couldn't come, he sent me email uh, this morning saying I'm somewhere uh, between uh, Rijeka and Zagreb, finish in the snow with a car. I have incident, I couldn't come. But uh, he sent me, which is very interesting, uh, 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 three page, uh, what he's uh, insisting to speak here uh, 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 on uh, Gil book on, on the blood, critical Christianity. So we will involve in the final version, I will say later what I, mean by final version, he's really good, uh, you will see, I will send you uh, inter uh, very good comments on your, uh, your um, um, uh, uh, position. So Bernard, <coughs> you will uh, speak another half, okay? And then uh, Professor Arpaloshnas of faculty, Novi Sad is here, welcome to conference, is here somewhere, I saw him. <laughs> Um, uh, Ivan Milenkovic, our colleague's film philosopher friend, is here. Um, uh, Tatiana Rosic, she's, she's from our faculty, she was come and... Uh, uh, so, two sessions, 
uh, and Professor, of course, Jan Cekic is here with us. So we will uh, try to summarize the first session, small break, uh, and then we will work immediately on the session. The, the rule is very simple, you know. So uh, introductionally, uh, let's say lecturing uh, on comments, then 10 minutes reacts each of us, which is on the list on the first part, and then uh, the, the, you will uh, uh, answer by one by one. Mm -hmm. And on the end, we can discuss, uh, of course, among us. And then, of course, the floor is open to, to all of you. You know, this is price of democracy. Everybody can speak. You know, um, so I'm very proud uh, that uh, I, I have a really big problem how to represent um, um, Professor Gilani Jar uh, to our small community, academic community regarding the fact that he is many years uh, visiting lecture professor here, and there are a lot of relationship, personal, uh, then professional, academic, uh, intimate. so it's always speaking uh, with the, uh, Professor Binalijar is always speaking uh, as academic, uh, professional relationship is always mixing and uh, but not reducing to the personal friendships, political friendship. So uh, what is, can be important for us uh, about all his project of critique of Christianity, this is to uh, how we can today, in so-called post-secular Europe, to understand uh, the paradox of uh, Christianity uh, back on the on the on the big 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 door, you know. So. Is it true? Is it true? And let me to quoting this invitation letter that I, I received. Just it, it was completely error. I'm, I, I haven't any alibi for this letter. You know, it's it's wrong of organizer. So it was sent by Telos Institute from New York, and uh, they informed me and invited me to participate in I am quoting in 70th annual Telos conference. February 15, 2013, in New York City. And topic is incredible. Religion and politics in post secular world. But subtitle is incredible. How we can save secular project. So is it really a, such an incredible situation in America and in Europe? that we are living in, in, in a new terra of uh, religion, uh, new, uh, new, new born religion, against born religion, Christianity always already is there. So we need to, to do something, uh, uh, you know, uh, anachronically to try to save a, a, a secular project. I hope we will uh, much discuss uh, about it, because as we know, in a guild uh, position is that secular project is always must be thinking and rethinking, writing and rewriting regarding the uh, Christian discourse. So uh, let's allow to our friends, Professor Binion Chisautro, that to speak uh, maximum uh, 29 minutes. Maximum. <laughs> uh, I'll take seriously the fact that it's a lecture. You, you said lecture. Yeah. So. Um, <clears throat> well, thank you, and thank you for everybody uh, for uh, being here. Um, it's um, some of my friends here have suggested that, in fact, I live in Belgrade, but sometimes I, I, I go to New York to teach, <laughs> and and more and more I'm I'm feeling like this, which makes it slightly more uh, uh, embarrassing to have uh, an occasion like this. Um, um, I should say that. Um, I'm very grateful for the opportunity to hear what uh, people might have to uh, to say about uh, about what I've done. Um, it's more and more opaque to me how um, anything that I have to say is uh, of um, any uh, relevance. And part of the issue is an issue of translation. Um, I'm very proud of the fact that um, uh, the Judea has been translated only in two. Uh, I hope I won't offend anybody if I say to Ottoman languages, nam namely Serbo-Croatian and Turkish. Um, the uh, um, 
the uh, other languages, uh, including English, uh, do have a, a, a problem of translation, um, which, uh, which I suppose I'm trying to occasion uh, on my own. So I, I just try to explain um, why, on the one hand, I am interested in religion, and on the other, why um, I'm interested in Christianity and why I think those two things are fundamentally different. Um, I should preface by saying that the Christianity I'm interested in is the one that has historically been called Western Christendom. So uh, it is the Catholic Church and the Protestant Reformation in its, uh, as they say in German, in its effective history. Yes, the effective history of Christianity in the West. Um, I suppose the founding date uh, to ask the question is 1492, which is both um, the um, final stage of ethnic cleansing in Western Europe, both with regard to Jews and for the most part Muslims. Um, it's, um, it's also, of course, the conquest of America, which is where, um, where Christianity gives itself the absolute right, basically, to take over the world. And, uh, and ultimately, it, um, it, um, it almost succeeds. Uh, although I should say um, that one of the somehow trivial pieces of information uh, that uh, I had read about when John Paul II uh, died, the New York Times had um, uh, statistics, we were talking about statistics, about the um, growth of Christianity in Africa. And I was completely shocked to find that in 1900, in 1900, there were two million Christians in Africa, two million. In 2004, when John Paul II died, in 2004, there were 143 million Christians in Africa. We don't think of the 20th century as the century of the mis missionary uh, growth of Christianity. And again, by Christianity, mostly Western uh, versions. Catholicism, but for the most part, evangelical Protestant uh, forms of Christianity have really taken over the continent. And by now, it's impossible not to think of Africa as, in fact, the fastest growing Christian community in the world. Um, so, um, so the fact of the sheer growth of Christianity, and again of Western versions of Christianity, is part of um, uh, of my starting point. Um, but the question I really um, want to ask is: um, when we speak about religion, we um, we often uh, have a very particular religion in mind. Most of the time those of us who have a religion, whatever that means, um, tend to think of our religion as one among many religions, which is not at all commonsensical. Um, one could think, I have the truth, and other people are mistaken. Yes, that would be a fairly common uh, understanding. So to, to say, I have a religion just like anybody else, yes, I'm a Buddhist, you're a Muslim, we have a religion, is not at all obvious. Um, it's a little, one example I like to use, it's a little like thinking that if I say um, I eat meat, I don't necessarily call myself a carnivore. Yes, I eat meat. I'm not a carnivore. This is not who I am. I just like meat. Uh, on, on the other hand, if I don't eat meat and I call myself a vegetarian, people will most often understand what it is that I'm saying. In other words, what I do in this case is what I am. Yes, whereas if I eat meat, this is what I do, but it is not what I am. Uh, those things are beginning to change. You can see how um, you could make a parallel also with, uh, with sexual, what is called sexual preference. Yes, Most people do not say, hi, I'm heterosexual. They just think they're normal, so they don't introduce themselves. Yes, Whereas someone who is gay will often say, hi, I'm gay. This is who I am. Yes, So sexual practice involves sexual identity, and sometimes it doesn't. Now, it's more complicated because people might identify themselves or refuse to identify themselves even though they carry an identity. White people in, the, in America have a tendency to do that. Yes, they don't recognize themselves as white. They may enjoy the privilege of being white, but they don't necessarily identify as such. 
So identity and practice, uh, uh, being and doing, are um, uh, the first vectors around which I ask the question, what is religion? Yes, how is it that one identifies in a way that is already universal? It's not just that I have my religion, it's that my religion is just like any other religion. Yes, I'm vegetarian just like you're carnivore. Again, the fact that it is not like that makes it very surprising that we would have such a general category as religion to encompass uh, everybody. The next uh, issue, historically, is that the critique of religion and I take as paradigmatic the French critique of religion. Voltaire is one of the most famous figures, of course, but there are uh, others. The moment the critique of religion happens, it, is, uh, it happens, first of all, because of a historical situation where people are tired of the authority and the privileges of the church. Yes? One can, of course, begin the critique of religion with the Reformation and even with the creation of every major religion. But um, let's stay now with the explicit enlightenment critique of religion. People are fed up with the priests. They're fed up with the authority of the church. They're fed up with the pope. How is it then that when Voltaire begins his explicit critique of religion, he doesn't write a play or a book on the pope or on the priest or on the church. He writes a play on Muhammad. It's a strange, um, it's a strange gesture, yes? If you're going to criticize the religion you know, why begin with the religion you in fact don't know, not to mention you don't even know enough about it to claim that you can compare it with your religion. Imagine if you live in a monarchy, yes, and you want to criticize the king and the monarchic reg regime. You start criticizing, and the, mon the monarchists start saying, well, but you know, every political regime has a problem, which is true enough, yes? Every political regime has a problem. But when the monarchists are in charge, it's a little strange that they would say, well, why don't you criticize democracy as well? Yes, or plutocracy or, or whatever. Um, so the situation that Voltaire, among others, sets up is we're going to criticize Christianity, but we're going to criticize it as one among all the religions. And we're going to do equal opportunity criticism. We'll criticize the Hindus, we'll criticize the Jews, we'll criticize the Muslims, we'll criticize everybody. And this is one um, gesture that to me already um, finishes basically the possibility of criticizing Christianity for what it is. And what it is is not immediately equivalent to Judaism, which doesn't have a pope or a church, to Islam, which also doesn't have a pope or a church, to Buddhism, that doesn't have a pope or a church, yes, or priests even, not in the same manner and certainly not with the same political, uh, bureaucratic, legal apparatus. So given the discrepancy between Christianity as a singular um, fact, historical fact, again, the effective history of Christianity in the West. Given the uh, speed with which the critique of Christianity immediately became the critique of religion, um, I was wondering whether we could slow down things a little and ask um, the way in which, um, if, as you mentioned, when we say, um, is there a Jewish question? Um, the answer is immediately yes, of course there's a Jewish question. Marx wrote the, on the Jewish question and explained to us um, that we need to rethink, for example, what the Jews are. Are the Jews a religion or are the Jews, in fact, uh, an economic group? Yes, Marx didn't ask this in very nice terms, but then none of the critical uh, uh, thinking is uh, always very nice, yes? So the point is not whether it is correct or incorrect, but rather to be open to the fact that after Marx, it's not possible to say, we know what the Jews are. We can't just say, no, no, but the Jews, it's just a religion, people pray. No, Marx says, we need to think otherwise. Um, so we can ask, what is Judaism? And of course, after, uh, um, after the invention of race sciences, which is some of uh, the material that I discuss in Semites, after the invention of race science, people also ask, well, what are the Jews? Are they a religion or are they a race? Are they a nation? Should they have a state? 
in the Middle East, for example, or in Uganda? Um, are they a nation or are they a religion? There is a question, yes? And um, whether, again, it's legitimate or not matters less than the fact that it is all over the place. People ask, what are the Jews? And people ask today, what are the Muslims? Are they a religion or are they a political entity? Should they be political or should they not be political? Yes, you, you, I'm sure you uh, 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 know about the debates over one, can Islam be democratic? Or, um, or is political Islam um, appropriate? Isn't political Islam the problem, like terrorists? Yes, they want to politicize Islam. So presumably Islam is not political, but if it becomes political, then it is a problem, right? So the separation, for example, between religion and politics is predicated on the same, um, on the same definition, in fact, of religion. We all know what a religion is, Christianity is one, Islam is one, Judaism is one, and we have clear distinctions as to what should not be uh, religion. That distinction, that distinction between religion and politics was in fact at the, at the center of the first way in which I try to ask what is Christianity, and the first answer is Christianity is that which divides strictly between religion and politics. So Christianity is not religion, it is that which divides religion from politics. So if you think of the Middle Ages and of the emperor and the pope, you don't say the pope was Christian and the emperor was nothing, yes, or something else. He wasn't a Muslim, he wasn't a Jew, he wasn't secular, yes? The emperor was Christian, just like the pope, but they divided the world in different ways. Schematically, the pope took the spiritual and the uh, emperor took the political, the material. It's actually not the way in which it was divided, but, but the, the general uh, frame was precisely that separation of religion from politics, the spiritual from uh, the material, the theological from the political. This led to a, 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 an entire political doctrine which is referred to as the king's two bodies because even in the king there is this division of the mystical body and the political body. Um, if you want, the king is the head and the people is the body. Um, all kinds of ways in which this division is uh, enacted. Um, and one of the things that I came to realize was that this division of the, of the body into the theological and the political was in fact also at work in the division of the enemy, right? So Christianity basically uh, needs to be understood not again as just a religion, but as a particular understanding of the separation between religion and politics. The political body, the spiritual body, <coughs> much as with the enemy, the theological enemy and the political enemy. And now, if you've read Shakespeare, you know that in fact, the division between Shylock and Othello is exactly along those lines. Shylock is a religious figure. By religious, of course, we mean that he doesn't behave like a proper Christian, um, and he also, um, uh, but he also treats other non-Jews in, in a way that is negative. Yes, he lends them money with interest. So it's a religion that mistreats other people. Uh, it's also an economic mode of behavior, but for the most part, Shylock is defined by his religion. He's Shylock the Jew. Othello, on the other hand, who also lives in Venice, who is also an outsider, um, is defined absolutely not by his religion. We don't know, in fact, whether Othello has a religion. I mean, now he's a, he appears to be Christian like everybody else, but he's definitely an outsider. And he's an outsider as a military and political figure. Yes? That is what makes him, in fact, uh, uh, foreign. Later, we can say that what makes him foreign is his race. Yes? Race, religion, also two different ways of separating the political or the physical, if you want, from the spiritual, yes, the, uh, the religious. So in Shylock and in Othello, you have basically the entire history of the enemies to bodies, the separation of religion and politics. One is a military threat, the other is a theological threat. So if there were a Christian question, the answer would have to be 
that Christianity, um, uh, uh, it would have to be asked, sorry. The, if there is a Christian question, it has to be asked as what is Christianity? And so the first answer, which is basically the, the, the first uh, work I was doing, mostly on the enemy and on Semites, is Christianity is a, an understanding of the world that divides strictly between theology and politics. And we would need to get into more details, of course, to understand what is included and what is excluded from, uh, from those. By the time I finished uh, with this, mostly by accident, um, since I was very interested in 1492, in the history of Spain, uh, in the history of the Inquisition, I started wondering about the image of blood. Uh, I, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but, um, but as you know, because, and uh, fundamentally I suppose that would be one of my questions, is that the, the distinction between Western Christendom and Eastern Christendom is not necessarily around the question of blood. Yes, it's not necessarily around uh, the question of transubstantiation, although there are differences there, and I'm um, uh, happy to, in fact, be enlightened. Um, so the argument I want to try to make around blood is not deterministic. It's not because there is blood, then all those things happen. What I'm trying to, um, to understand with blood is another way of asking the Christian question. The short version is, if you look at law, if you look at science, if you look at politics, if you look at biology, um, if you look at economy in the modern period, it is absolutely astounding how much blood is found. Money is blood, you know, Marx on capitalism as vampirism, but in fact the idea by the time Marx deploys it is already old. Um, it's been at work since at least Hobbes, yes? So money is blood, very strange idea, yes? Or blood is money. Why would anybody think like that? Or what is a person in legal terms? A person is flesh and blood. Why flesh and blood? Why not flesh and bones? Why not nerves and skin? Yes, or why not all of it? Yes, it's a strange definition. Why flesh and blood? Relatives, it might be the same um, um, in, uh, in Serbian, yes? Relatives, family, what is family? <coughs> blood kin. Why? Why are your relatives blood? Why are they more blood than bread? Or uh, everything that you eat, or, or, or the clothes that you wear, or the landscape that you look, yes? All kinds of things are possible. In fact, as you know, genealogy often is represented as a tree. So let's say my relatives are my branches. I mean, it's no more arbitrary or metaphorical than to say my relatives are my blood. Yes? Uh, after all, it's not like people bleed all over the place when they are relatives, although I understand in some families it's a common practice. Um, but that's you know, not good families. So in anthropology in the and in law, the conception of the human being based on blood Family based on blood, money based on blood. Um, those of you who know uh, Foucault, when he starts talking about the biopolitical and about liberalism, one of the terms he says completely takes over all thinking is the term circulation. And circulation is a term from alchemy. And the funny thing is that in alchemy, circulation used to mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Dushan, uh, used to mean conversion, right? Um, so not necessarily even a circular uh, process, but the transformation, um, almost like tran transubstantiation. Circulation begins to mean uh, uh, a process whereby fluids, for the most part, are enclosed in a closed system uh, with William Harvey, who discovers the circulation of the blood. The funny thing, of course, is that Harvey was never able to prove it. Um, even though it was clear that the body was closed, he was never able to understand how the system was closed. The thing that Harvey did demonstrate was that the heart is a pump. The heart is a pump. We, people didn't know that before, yes? Um, and, um, and Harvey um, deploys the word circulation to describe the process whereby the, blood, the heart um, pushes blood throughout the body. From the moment Harvey writes, Hobbes takes it up in Leviathan, and then it's everywhere. 
And circulation becomes a kind of master signifier to describe everything. The circulation of air, the redoing of the sewers, uh, the, the economy, of course, um, um, uh, traffic, yes, when we talk about, uh, uh, in Italian, circolazione, to, uh, um, to talk about traffic in the street. Um, so, um, so blood, in fact, determines pretty much every field that we can think of, yes? And it is very strange because there is no reason, no objective reason, no material reason why it should be at the center of thought of, uh, um, of any kind. So by trying to trace how, um, um, how those conceptions of embryology, yes, you are my flesh and blood, of anthropology, of law, uh, in law, uh, I forgot to mention that most modern states have had a debate over uh, the definition of citizenship between you sanguinis and you solis, yes? Whether you are born in a place, that's what makes you a citizen, or whether you are born of a parent, of parents who are of the place, that's you sanguinis. What's interesting is that those are Roman terms from Roman law, and in Roman law, they meant absolutely nothing like what they come to mean in modern times. So appropriation of ancient terms for, uh, in fact, uh, uh, sanguification, yes? To make them even more uh, bloody. So to witness this kind of proliferation of blood um, makes the division, which we take for granted between discipline, remember I started with religion and politics, yes? Division of the world, but also division of disciplines. You don't, when you study political science, you don't study religious studies. These are different things. And again, the question is why? When you study religion, you don't study economics. And again, the question is why? How can you have a religion if it doesn't have an economic existence? Um, so the separation of spheres and the separation of disciplines is, as, a, as it were, undone when you consider that blood suffuses every uh, moment. And it does that in a very particular way in the Christian West. This is not found everywhere. Not everywhere people talk about themselves as flesh and blood. Not everywhere do they talk about themselves as blood relatives, yes? So that very distinction um, gave me a kind of um, key, um, uh, as it were, a signature, yes? Something that enables to identify uh, the limits of Christianity, yes? If, and of course it's a big if, and we can go into this maybe in the conversation, if blood is particularly Christian, then its presence in modernity, in law, in science, in anthropology, in economics, um, makes, um, um, makes the uh, boundaries of Christianity uh, more identifiable. So you remember I started with the question, what is Christianity, really? Yes. Once we accept that Christianity is not a religion like every other, then the question becomes, well, what is Christianity? And so at first it was the separation of religion and politics. But uh, more expensively, with blood, it becomes, in fact, a very division of science and law and religion and politics and economics. Um, but always thinking those fields in, an, in a, um, not necessarily essential, but in a um, repetitive manner with blood. So that's the, uh, um, that's the general uh, framework where I um, um, try to answer uh, the Christian question. For the most part, though, I, I do also still want to stay with the question. What is Christianity? It's a question that I suppose has relevance here as well. Um, um, but in, in, in the West, with the debates over secularization, with the debates as, you know, as to protecting the secular project, um, which often I think is, is about protecting you know, the, uh, the white race, um, because of course we know who is not properly secularized. Yes, these are the Muslims, these are the Africans, these are um, um, the Balkans, yes? Uh, ethnic problem, religious problem, everywhere where there's a problem, which of course the West can say, we don't have that problem, we resolved the question a long time ago. Um, a, a way of asserting supremacy in a, in a, in a novel manner every time. Um, so the, 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 um, to stay with the question, to stay with the Christian question, how is Christianity still with us? In what way does it disappear even though it's still at work? 
this is really uh, the question I want to uh, stay with. Thank you for your patience. Mm -hmm.